We're back guys. I am so, so, so excited for today's video. This is something that I have been struggling with for a really long time in my walk with God. It's really, how do I actually spend time with him? Um, it's a question that I get a lot because I do speak on my channel about doing devotionals and about spending time with God, but I don't think I've ever actually shown you guys what that time with God looks like for me. And I think it does vary just depending on who you are and how you communicate and just how you and God's relationship is. This is personally what works for me. And I just wanted to share it with you guys because like I said, I struggled for a really, really long time with understanding like, okay, how do I spend time with them? How do I just read my Bible? How do I supposed to apply this stuff? And even just the desire, like just being completely transparent, I didn't always desire spending time with God. And there's still days that I have to actually push myself, but this makes it so much easier and it works for me. So yeah, I just wanted to share with you guys and hopefully it's helpful. And I would love for you guys to leave a comment below if you have some helpful tips, because we're all in this journey together. We all need to learn. So I would love to hear what are your tips when you're reading the Bible as well. Yeah, let's get into it guys. So three things that I typically have with me that are like, I feel like, for me and my time with God, they're the non-negotiables to bring is my Bible, which right now I have the Tony Evans study Bible. And this was high key a key. This was the thing that transformed my life so much just because I used to try to read the Bible and a lot of it didn't make sense to me. I was reading in King James version, which is nothing wrong with. It was just like, I would struggle to like really get an understanding of what was going on. So what I did was I got a study Bible. So that way, even though I may have my own understanding when I'm reading, I could also get somebody else's understanding and there was them. I believe he's the first black man to have a study Bible or have a Bible in general. So. Yeah, I got this Bible originally for Quran, and then I used to just take his Bible and just read it and mark it down. Like, let me just get my own Bible so I'm not messing with his. It helps break down the scriptures even more to understand the biblical context around it. And the beginning of each chapter, it breaks down what is going on in that chapter, the context around it. Because a lot of times we'll read scriptures, but we don't really understand the context of what's actually happening in that scripture. It just gives you so much information, and it makes the Bible that much more real. This is not just some imaginary world. It's history and it's also living. So I just wanted to know that it's living as well. And it's, it's a lot of trip in it of what's going on today. Like everything that's happened in the Bible, but like it's relatable to what's happening today in today's time as well. Also, I typically have a devotional with me. Boom. This is the devotional I'm reading right now by Joyce Myers called The Confident Woman. It's really amazing. I've had it for a while. I've definitely skipped around and went to other devotionals, but like this one is like my consistent one that I go to. And it's really good. It's all about like how to become a more confident woman with Jesus. And also I have my notebook and I just talk to God in it. I allow the downloads or the messages or the things that he spoke to me that day, I write it down. If it's something that really stands out, if it's a scripture that really stands out, I just write it down. And even if there's like sermons, I have a notebook similar for sermons, but I just write down everything he spoke to me and I just make it my own, like on the top of my journal. <laughs> I put Abba's lessons because after the first maybe couple of weeks of writing in here, I was like, oh wow, you really are an amazing teacher. I used to always get worried like, God, you haven't put these people in my, you haven't put the right people in my life to lead me. In a sense, I, that's just how I used to feel. God, why don't I have people in my life telling me like, oh, you should do this right, or you should do this right. Or like, how do I learn your word, God? Like, how do I? And I've learned that he is the best teacher that anybody could have. So. Yeah, and I've been learning that in, <laughs> in my time with him. So that's that. These are the three things I typically have with me. But I will say all these things you can, if you don't have the money to get it, completely understand. You can also do this on the Bible app. I know the Bible app is what majority, a lot of people have. And I love it. Like I go there if I don't have my Bible and stuff with me. And on there they have devotionals as well that you can also dive into. So one of the first most important things for me at least, because I sometimes struggle to get motivated. So what I'll do is I'll actually set the atmosphere as soon as I get up. Because most of the time things happen, like things come up, like I get busy. And if I wait till the evening just off of my track record, <laughs> it doesn't happen. If I just say, oh, I'm just gonna do it later on that night, it just never ends up making it, I don't know. But I've learned to start, do it in the morning. So 
what I'll do is I'll start playing music early in the morning just to get my heart in that right posture to want to get in my word. Right now, Maverick City has been on my heart. Like that's my go-to worship. But in the mornings when I first get started, I typically listen to more like a Dante bow or even a Chance the Rapper. Like I, I love that type of genre because it is also very lifting, you got a beat to it. So it gets me like hype in the morning. So that's like literally before I even get out of bed, I'm already like connected to the speaker and playing some music. So that's the first thing that I do. Another thing for me is figuring out where do you feel very light, very relaxed as of late is reading in my closet, my prayer closet. I used to be very like, oh, very like, why? <laughs> why do I need to do it? But it's something very sacred about those moments when I do go to my prayer closet. It's just like very, I feel like fortified in a sense. Like I feel like it's a different level of vulnerability that I have when I'm there with him. And I feel like it's no distractions. When I feel like it's something God really is trying to download into my spirit, then most of the time I would definitely hit my closet. That way I ain't got no distractions that day. But some days when it's harder for me to get in the mood, I will go to that safe place, that place that relaxes me. So. Yeah, just finding a meeting place that you can go and speak to God every time, I found really helpful. All right, tip number three. So tip number three is definitely pray. Um, it may seem like common sense, okay, like, you know, you're spending time with God, of course, prayer comes up. But I typically like to pray in the beginning of my time with God. I probably start again with some worship music. I put headphones in and that's when I'll start listening kind of to worship and like get my heart in the right posture. So. When I listen to the song lyrics, I literally will find lyrics that will apply to where I am in my life. So, um, I know one for me, uh, what song was I just listening to? No oh, freaking music. I love Molly music. Uh, that's the song I just looked at. So, one of the lyrics says, Lord, forgive me. That's like the first thing in this song. So what I do is like, God, what have you forgiven me for? And then I'll start to remember the things that he's already forgiven me for, the areas in my life where I've struggled to forgive myself, where I could come to him and I knew he already forgave me. I just find the lyrics in the songs and I find the connection to it of what he's already done for me and also just a remembrance of who he is. And typically that's what kind of actually stirs and starts to change my heart. Um, but after I realize, okay, my heart is in that right posture, let me go ahead and pray. I go in and I pray and I ask the Holy Spirit to come into the room. I ask for him to lead me in my worship with him. I ask him to lead me in my devotional, but also in my Bible. I ask him to give me understanding and wisdom. I ask him just everything that's on my heart, honestly. It's not a specific prayer that I say every morning, but I kind of just, even what's on my heart. If I woke up that morning, I'm like, oh, I don't want to do anything. I just want to lay in bed or... I wake up and I'm like, I have an attitude. Like, cause there's some days where <laughs> maybe I didn't eat enough the night before and I wake up with a whole attitude and I'm like, God, please, whatever is in my heart that is allowing me to be, uh, to not have forgiveness for somebody else or that is allowing me to be so annoyed or so bothered by everybody else, really refocus my heart. So I kind of just get really vulnerable with God very early on in our uh, time together. And I'm just like, God, whatever it is, whatever you want to teach me today, I'm willing. I put myself aside and I ask that you come into this moment that you talk to me, that you speak to me, and that you hear me, you hear my cries. And yeah, I just set the space for him. I start with worship, then I pray. And then after that, I'll probably get into my devotional and scripture if I'm feeling led. It just depends on what's said in the scripture. It's been time where the scripture of the day is the thing that stood out to me. And I went and I read the scripture of the day or the thing has been maybe just another word in there that really stood out to me. And I'll go and search that word and figure out where in the Bible is that word. Just different ways that he'll speak when I read my devotional. And I just look for the things that stand out to me. That's it. Like I look for the things that stand out that really resonate with me and I find it in the Bible and then I go in deeper. So yeah, that's what I do <laughs> after I find a scripture or something that I feel like I want to meditate on. That's quite literally what I do. I find that scripture and I break it down word by word. And I can kind of show you that, like that really quick. So as you can see, for example, I have highlights on here. I have a few sticky notes and even on the side, I have some labels. And what I do with the labels is if something really stood out to me that day and I'm like, oh, I have to go back to this or it was speaking to a particular problem I was having, I would go ahead and label it right over here. That way I can easily get back to it. For example, how to know the teaching is from God, like moments like this when I know I want to go back to it or how to handle betrayal or just different lessons, even the one before this, the aroma of God. What is the aroma of God? That was for this section over here. 
So it's just different things that I do to label it to go back later on. But also in this section, for example, like I was telling you, they have the, the context underneath of what these things mean. So for this section right here in verse three, what I'll do is if my scripture was probably two, let's go with that one. You yourself are our letters written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. So what I'll do is I keep repeating it over and over. And then I figure out what words are really standing out to me. So for this verse in particular, letter is standing out to me. And then the fact that it's written on our hearts is standing out to me. So I'll dive deeper into those words. And what I'll do is for example, Example, this is one that I've done before I'll zoom y'all out <laughs> for example this is one I've done before like Isaiah and I'll write down which ar arise means stand so I'll write down the definitions of each and then I'll read what does it actually say to me so for this example arise shine for your light has come I mean stand shine means to give out a bright light light means the natural agent that stimulates light and makes things visible so when I read it out loud, or when I read all my definitions together, I'll get something like this. Stand and direct your light in order to see something in the dark. For your natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible has moved, and the praise, honor, and distinction of the most high quality of brightness is over you. So it just gives me more detail of what he's saying. Hopefully that makes sense. It doesn't always <laughs> look exactly like this. Sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's longer. But yeah, I just read different parts and I break down like what does that actually mean? All right guys, so that is how I read my Bible. I just wanted to share a last few tips that I've learned through this journey that have been really helpful to me. One thing, if I haven't already mentioned it, is switching the Bible translations, maybe something that may be a little bit easier to read. Like I used to read a King James version, but now I kind of read a New Living Translation just because sometimes it makes a little bit more sense. Or if I just need clarity on the version I'm reading, I'll jump to a different version just to try to get a different understanding. So that's something that's been really helpful for me. And another thing, when I first started reading, that I used to do is I used to meditate for a little bit. And it didn't have to be anything crazy. I just would do a little mindful <laughs> mindfulness meditation, which basically would just calm me down so I could actually take in what God is saying. So it would just be a few breathing practices and you can do it as short as five minutes. You could probably even do a two minute one. And I feel like any of it would help, but I just focus my breathing and I calm myself all the way down so I can really take in what he's trying to say to me. I do have ADHD, so sometimes my brain can be like, well, I wanna get to what's next. So for me to calm down and like really take in what he's saying, that was like amazing. Also, taking my time when I'm reading. So it's so much to take in when you're reading the word of God. So instead of taking huge chunks, I break it down even by a scripture. I may break it down to three words just to like really take in every single word that he's saying. But most importantly, like one of the biggest things that I've learned in my time with God, and I'll be remiss to not mention it here, is to be gentle with yourself and don't allow shame to push you away from reading your word. So on the Bible app, it'll allow you to track how many days in the Bible that you've read and I started to really beat myself up, not even just because of me not being on the Bible, but it will also tell you like what other people, how their track record is. So compare your track record to your friend's track record. And I used to really beat myself up because I'm like, dang, I didn't get in my word today. And I would feel so bad and so shameful to the point where I wouldn't want to get back in it the next day or the next day after that. So. One of my biggest things, don't allow the shame to uproot you from God. Like at the end of the day, he knows you. He's so sovereign that he already knew that, okay, last week I fell off bad, but just get back to it. Don't allow the devil to creep into those moments because that happened to me so many times. One of the things that I wrote down a really long time ago is to not let the shame push you away. Although we are, are taking an after choice of reading our word and getting into a deeper relationship with God, there may be days where you do fall off. It may be weeks that you fall off. That was my story, I fell off. And I would get so like ashamed of myself to the point where I wouldn't even want to go back and read my word. I would just be like, just forget it. I already fell off anyway, so why even try to get back to it? But that's literally one of the biggest tricks of the enemy is to try to deceive us and put shame into us. So I just tell you guys, I'm asking you guys not to allow that to happen. If you fall off, it's okay. He knew it was gonna happen. God literally is so sovereign. He already knew you was gonna fall off and he already gave you grace for it. So all you have to do is just come back and be like, God, my bad bro, my fell off, but I'm back and I'm here and I'm willing to serve you. So that's it. Just don't allow that. Don't allow you slipping up or falling off to ever deter you from really getting back and getting back to God. His arms are always open and wide for you, waiting for you. 
So don't allow the enemy to creep in and deceive you. Even if your Bible reading is not hour long, people will make you feel like, uh, or the enemy will even make you feel like, oh, if I do not read my Bible for hours on end, that it is just pointless. But I've learned that even if I tell myself, let me just get in it for 10 minutes, let me just do five minutes, let me just read a scripture, a lot of times what will happen is the Holy Spirit will move in into those moments and it may be longer than that. You may actually may take a hold of you and you may be there a lot longer than you even expected, but it's such a peace in that moment. So just do what you can. I think that's ultimately what I'm trying to say is just do what you can. Even if it's not for an hour, even if it's for five minutes, even if it's just a scripture, just do what you can. And I pray and I believe that God will fill in the rest. So. I love you guys so much. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Again, make sure you leave your tips of Bible reading or what you do in your time of God. Make sure you leave it below. I'm just really thankful to have this space with you guys. So I to make sure that you guys are subscribed. Turn your post notifications on. We have a lot more content coming you guys' way. So I pray that God covers you and protects you through this next season of your life. And I pray that you have a boldness and a confidence and a yearning to be in God and God's word. I pray nothing but blessings over your life. So, bye guys.